Hello everyone, this is Verbo. Today let's discuss a more precise method for remaxing or mimicking images, along with a brief update of the previous image mimic workflow. Since my last video got removed again for nudity, I really don't know how the YouTube review system works, but it is the support from you guys that keeps me going. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use ControlNet a more precise control technology to generate images, not just limited to image mimic, but also like sketch to realism in anime, product, or architectural design. Make sure you watch the whole video just not to miss anything important. Let's take a look at the models first, and then we'll go through the workflows and examples in detail. The first one is the control net. Here we use the latest 2.1 A-step version which has fixed various issues in the previous version, like the speed issue and the blur issue, etc, etc. Like this, as they said in the update note, the blurry issue and the speed issue. With this control net, you can guide the Z image model to generate images based on depth, pose, or canny maps, etc. Like you can see from here, this is the pose plus in paint and the pose control net. This is the pose control net. This is the Kenny control net using this control net to generate this image. And this is the HED control net and the depth control net using this control net to generate these images plus the prompt. And it also supports tile, which is like some kind of a upscaling method to upscale a low resolution image. It also supports in paint. We'll, we'll also take a look at the in painting in the video. And the second one is this loving snuggly positions which enables the model to do more complicated poses or positions or many other things, censored or uncensored. It is a full rank lower, quite big, 11 gigabyte, but it's very powerful. And the other models like the Mystic XXX now upgraded to version 4 and the Asian to Caucasian slide lower and other lowers. Now let's go through the workflows. Two workflows today. One is the Z image control net workflow and another is the old image mimic workflow. I have also uploaded the workflows to running hub, the cloud computer platform I've been using to develop workflows and test new ideas. Also free and much faster than my local GPU. Here you don't need to set up or download anything, just click and run. Or if you are really not into this I thing, I also made the workflow into an AI app like this. You can simply upload an image and write some prompt, set up the resolution, click run, done. If you want to run this workflow locally, you need to install Configure on your local computer first. Here's a detailed installation guide. Follow this guide and my other Configure installation video to install Configure. I will provide the links for you. After that, start your Configure. You will see a panel like this. Open the workflow I provided the control net workflow. You can just drag it to the Configure canvas and then release. Configure will open the workflows automatically for you. If you get any missing custom nodes when opening the workflow, just click the manager here and click install missing custom nodes. Configure will install all the missing custom nodes for you. After that, restart your Configure and then refresh this page. Now back to the workflow. The core idea behind this workflow is to use this control net model to guide the base model to generate a specific pose, position, or structure based on the reference image you provided, the depth map or pose or canny or any of them combined. On the left side is the fast group bypasser. You can enable or disable the groups you want here. Just click to enable or disable. The note above is all the models used in this workflow. If you run this workflow locally, open the links and download the model files to the specified place. From left to right, here's the model loading part. I use the BF16 version. If you have a low VRAM GPU, you can use the FPA version. The lower loaders here, if you are generating human-related images, you can enable these lowers. But from my testing, some of the lowers seem not so compatible with this control net. Below is the seed and resolution limit. If you don't have enough VRAM, lower this output size limit to 1024 or 720 or lower. For easier testing, I use this Queen VL note to write the prompt for me. You could disable it and write the prompt yourself. 
Just write the prompt here and then link it to this show any node. The models, the Queen VL node used, will automatically download the first time you run this node. It may take a while, depending on your internet connection. If you run into problems with this node, just right click and reload this node. And here's the control net reference maps. I added three and the combo. Choose the suitable one for your needs in this switch any node, like this one. You can switch it to one, two, three, four. The first one is the depth map. This depth map is quite stable, but it strongly prioritizes the depth map of the control image. For example, if the control image shows a character with short hair, the final output will most likely be short haired. Let's use this short hair woman for a test. You can see now we select it to one using the depth map. Just right click before running the whole workflow to check if the control net is correct. You see, this is the depth map of this input image. Now let's click run to see how the result goes. Just click run. You can see from the result, if you use a depth map, the result will most likely follow the depth map. Short hair and the result is also a short hair. Other elements are quite similar. It's just the character changed. And the second one is the pose reference map. This one, it is great for just keeping the pose and add other elements freely. We could change it to two and then right click, see how it is. Just keep. You can see this is the pose map. Third one is the canny edge. It's like some kind of drawing. And the last one is the blend mode. You could blend any of them. Like here I blend the depth and the canny. Let's change it to four, see how it is. And then right click to execute this node. This is depth map and the canny map combined. You could also change it to like the pose plus depth. Just link it to this image blend node. And then right click, you see? This is the pose and the depth map. Use this blend mode, sometimes you may get better results. And the control net node here, adjust the strength. If the output is kind of blurry, try lowering this value to find a balance between the control net and the base model. The two case samplers here. The first one is for the basic structure, like the depth map or pose map generation. And the second one is for the details, the environment, the details. I found that with two K samplers, the result is much better than just using a single sampler. And on the right is the seed VR to upscaler group. Using this upscale group, you can increase the low resolution images to a very high quality. Just pay attention to the resolution here. This is the target resolution and this is the max resolution. The models in this node will also be downloaded the first time you run it and it is quite big. So just be patient. <laughs> And if you run into problems with this node, also just right click and reload this node and set offload device to CPU. And below is the in paint group. This workflow uses the same control net model. Most parts remain the same. It's just that for in painting, you need to make masks, right? Automatically or manually. Here I added a auto human clothes segmentation node for clothes change and a switch. If you want to make a mask manually, just set it to false and then draw the mask manually on the load image node. Right click and open it in mask editor and then brush the area you want to in paint. Make sure there's no hole in the middle and then click save. Okay, a mask. And then write the prompt for the things you want to change in the mask. This control net model also supports in paint with control like pose or depth. You can link both of them to this node. Uh, this is a post control net. Let's right click, you can see. Post control net, you can also link it to this one here. It will also work. And that's all for the workflow explanation. Now let's do some tests to see the pros and cons using this control net. For faster testing, uh, let's go to the cloud computer. My local computer, too crappy. Start from the app one. Let's use a human photo. Use prompt inversion to describe the input photo and then try to mimic this photo. Let's select one, okay, using depth map and then use this image mimic prompt template and get to here. This one is for sketch to real. I will talk about it later. Click, 
run. You can see this Queen VL node is kind of different from my local Queen VL node. The version of my local Queen VL node is newer than the one from the cloud computer. So if you download the workflow from Running Hub, you need to reload this node to match your local version. And here is the prompt, a description of the input image. We use this prompt plus this control net to mimic an image similar to the input image. And the result, not so bad. Following the post very well. Only the character changed, but it is an Eastern woman. Let's use this Asian to Caucasian slide lower to change it to a Western woman. See if it still works. This Asian slide. Click, right click and bypass to enable this one. And set it to 2, according to the author. 2 means Caucasian. Click run again. Now the result is an Caucasian woman. But the resolution is kind of low, so the quality seems a bit less. Let's see the upscaled one. Now after upscaling, the quality is much, much better. And that's why I always said in my any video, highly recommend to use this CDPR2. It really, really makes your output image go to another high level. Now let's enable this red Z image LoRa, see if, if the results has any difference. It enhanced the realism, but I don't know if it works here. And then click run. Uh, the result doesn't seem to get better. It seems the control net is not that compatible with the red Z image. Now let's try an object, a simple one, a sketch of fact, and then still use the depth control net, but we need to change the template to sketch to real. Click run. The result. Mm, the shape is fine, but the details are off. You can see that the two strips is gone. For this kind of drawing, maybe the Kenny Edge map is better. Let's change it to Kenny Edge. Kenny Edge 3. One, two, 3. And then click Run again. This one seems much, much better. The shape, the details, pretty good, though not 100%. Let's try a more complex one. A sketch of a ring and then use the yeah let's use Kenny Edge just click run this uh, sketch to realism kind of like the anything to real lore it's just that using control net you have more control over the result the prompt matters a lot with this control net as the author said in the intro page which means I assume that the control net is not strong enough that's why the author said this control net needs a very detailed prompt, right? Think about it. If a control net is strong enough, you don't need much a prompt. Let's see the result. Mm. Yes, as I said, this control net may not be strong enough. The prompt matters a lot. And you can see we have already set the strength to one and the details are still a bit off. Although the in general, the shape is correct, but the details you can see just not following the control net map very well. Final one, let's try an anime, a superhero. Which one? Which one do you like? Let's use this one. Let's uh, still use Kenny Edge control net, see how it goes, and then click run. Uh, the main picture is okay, but the hands is broken. Let's try a combination of Kenny and depth map. See if it gets better or pose. Let's use the combo mode and then select the depth and the Kenny edge, right? This one, yeah. And then click run again. Still not working so well. Maybe with human, we should just use depth and the pose. Yeah, let's try again. Use depth and pose. Link the pose to this one. Click run again. Okay, this one is much better. You can see with human animation, using the combination of depth map and the pose is much, much better. But as you can see, although most parts of the result is correct, but the details are not following so well. You can see the hands shouldn't be outside. It should be in the within the cloth. I think this is the limit of this control net for now. Acceptable, the result, but not so perfect. As they said in the to-do list, they need to chain on better result for this control net model. 
it still need to put more efforts into this control net model to make it better and perfect. Now let's take a look at the in paint workflow. Let's just use auto masking to separate the clothes first and then use a simple prompt. Set it to true on auto masking and then use a use a, a white dress. Disable this loss and then click run. You can see the clothes has been separated and the and the mask has been made. Here we just use a single K sampler. Since with two K sampler it doesn't work at all. <laughs> I tested. Doesn't seem so bad. So it kind of worked. The dress changed to a white dress as the prompt. Of course, you could use other prompts to add or remove the clothes. Make sure you do not use this on a real human. Use this within the bounds of the law, or else you may face legal issues. And for my in, for my testing, the in paint feature of this control net model is not that perfect, as you can see from the previous result. Some weird artifacts in the result. I hope it will get better in the next version. Finally, let's take a look at the image mimic workflow. Let's go back to my local PC. In fact, this workflow is quite similar, only without a control net node. The app one is the text to image generation. Use the Red Sea image lower for realism enhancement and other enhancement lower. Writing a simple prompt is all you need. Let's focus on the image to image workflow. In this workflow, the logic to mimic an image is to use the Queen VL node here to analyze the input image for details and then use the input image as the latent image for post control. You can see I encode the input image into a latent and then use it in the K sampler. Here we don't use a control net like uh, we saw before, but use this denoise value in the K sampler to control the pose. Remember, the lower the value, the more the output looks like the input image. Zero means not change the input image at all. And the higher the value, the more freedom the model has to be more creative, but less likeliness to the input image, of course. For example, let's use this image and use a denoise value of 0.9 and then click run. See the result? The details are quite similar, but the pose is just not following so well. Let's change it, this denoise value to 0.3. Use a low value and see how it works. And then click run. And now the result, you can see, much more like the input image. The pose, the composition, almost identical. Only the character changed. So this is how you change the similarity between the output and the input image. Just change this denoise value in the case sampler. And if in the result, some parts of the body are not enough for you, you can use a lower to enhance it. Like the breasts or other parts, just search a lower for it. You can use all this kind of lower to enhance the result. But this is the fun to play with open source models. You can always find a lower for it. This workflow also works on non-human objects, not just limited to human. It also works like on poster or landscape and other things. Just give it a try. And don't forget, if you are not satisfied with the result, use this ZVR2 to upscale the output to a higher quality to make it better. And that's all for today's video. If you think it is helpful, please like, share the video and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or good ideas, please share them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you.